All right. Welcome agencies. My name is Alex Glenn. I'm going to be presenting today 10 ways to increase ROI of your partnerships. These could be partnerships with other agencies. They could be partnerships with other technology companies. Who am I? I am a former agency operator, now founder of Partner Hub. We exist under an umbrella brand called PartnerPrograms.io, which maybe hopefully you're familiar with. We help train and develop agencies and technology teams on how to partner. Uh, Partner Hub is the bottom of the funnel. It is where these teams come together to find each other, align, and grow. My background is a go-to-market strategist, um, mainly for marketplaces and SaaS. And I've worked on SaaS teams. I've worked as an agency operator and as a consultant. Let's get into the presentation. If you want to follow us, Right to Revenue is my Twitter handle. We do have a Partner Hub handle, but it is not very active, honestly. Um, okay, so before we get into the meat of the presentation, let's all align on who we're talking about, if we are in this bucket or not. Now, the types of partnerships you want to consider. You are an agency operator. You can refer business. You can implement software or you can strictly co-sell and co-market with your partners. This third bucket over here is the unsung hero of partnerships. It is where I suggest every partner starts before you decide what you're going to be doing together for the long term. Reason for that is a few reasons. I mean, if you go into a partnership and it's purely, who can you send me today? Uh, that partnership, chances are, will fail pretty quickly. If you go into that partnership with, I just want to be an affiliate, I have a blog post that's ranking, and I just need an affiliate link, we call that an affiliate relationship. That's not even a partnership. If you want to be a referral partner for a an agency or a SaaS, you're after the referral commissions, maybe, or maybe you want reciprocity, you want referrals back. That's where partnerships could end, here or here, but where they begin typically here. And um, you can get something from the partnership immediately if you align on how can we help create a new pie together, as opposed to I'm, a, I'm after a piece of your pie, you're after a piece of my pie. Don't think about that. Think about it like there's more out there that we can work together to get towards. I have maybe budget, I have traffic, I have a newsletter, I've got a popular YouTube channel. Um, I've got stuff and you've got stuff. Let's figure out how we can create together to go after that new pie and build a business together. Co-selling we'll get into more in a minute. Now, before you start partnerships, you've got to have your own business under control. Meaning, are your operations streamlined? Do you feel like system systems are working inside of your business. If you don't have systems yet and your operations aren't streamlined, adding a third party into that mix is going to just cause chaos for both you and your partner. If you have operations streamlined and you have been in bad partnerships, a lot of times it's because maybe their operation wasn't streamlined and they couldn't be that partner that they claim to be because they were just all over the place. Sales. If you cannot sell your own services, your ability to sell someone else's services, probably low, not likely. Um, this isn't a requirement, but it is great to have. If your partner or you are selling re retainers, that is an easy way to bake software or bake a white label relationship into that retainer. You're selling PPC services and um, maybe a compliance or a call tracking um, SaaS company want to work with, you can easily bake those um, software into your PPC retainer. Just add a little bit of cost for your client, get trained up on how to implement that software, and it works with the services you currently sell. And what's great about that is for your partner and for you on the commission side of things, if that's what you're after, you can repeat those sales and continue uh, retaining those, those retainers. Retain the retainers. Um, and then expertise, you know, if we're going to partner together, I'm relying on you to have thought, leadership, 
or at least have people coming to you for something. And then of course that benefits me and vice versa. You want to make sure that if, if I'm another agency you want to partner with, I have expertise in my area and uh, you're relying on me and my expertise to draw business. And then that business filters down to you because you're my referral or white label partner. Okay. Now, the first thing that you need to do to make sure you're getting ROI from partnerships is making sure that you're taking the partner on the right track and that you're not trying to force a square peg in a round hole and also that you're not leaving opportunity in, on the table. If you're trying to force a software or agency relationship directly to referral only without even knowing each other, you know, that's the square peg round hole. It's just, I don't know you yet. I'm not comfortable referring you business. Let's get there. Let's date a little bit before we get married. So making sure that you're starting with the first call and presentation, if the software or the agency makes it past that sort of qualifier, go into a team lunch and learn. We've got agencies that do these every Friday. That's a great team building exercise as well. The partner typically buys lunch. And from there, regardless of what the team says about the product or the agency, there's no reason you guys can't create after that. But ideally, everybody would be sold on, hey, you know what? It's a great product or a great agency. We think we can do stuff with this. Let's get right into the co-marketing collaboration. Co-marketing collaboration is next uh, on a suggested um, level. These arrows exist because, yeah, you could immediately have a referral in mind, and that's great, but nine times out of 10, that doesn't happen. Um, and then maybe you want to become an implementation partner immediately. Again, typically it takes a little bit longer, but um, that could happen. But typically it goes like this, and then they roll up into a co-marketing agenda. You meet with the marketing lead, and then you've got a go-to-market sort of strategy in place where... We want to be in front of your audience. You can be in front of ours, sure, but you came to us. So let's let's figure out how we can get in front of your audience. And then later, maybe, maybe we become implementation partners. We get on the certification track. Or at the very least, we're just referral partners. We've got a referral link. You've got a referral link. We've got you listed in a blog post. And uh, you can use that co-marketing activity, that actual URL, that asset that you've created with your partner to help with the co-selling agenda, which we'll talk about again in a few. Number two, um, being a great partner and being able to get ROI from partnerships is greatly improved if you productize services. Setting up your services as standalone products or at least having one or two does a few things for you. Number one, and why it relates to partnerships, is if you talk about how you sell a specific retainer service, this one's on top of Klaviyo, obviously HubSpot. These are on top of Pardot. You see HubSpot there. These are top agencies. Here's a link if you want to go directly to, I think, this page. Um, these are top agencies that list a product and a service and a price tag. Product is this. I'm gonna create five to eight workflow campaigns. Pricing is $16.95, and then this is all on top of Klaviyo. So what this does for you is, A, it makes you a killer partner because if I'm a Klaviyo customer success rep or a Klaviyo sales rep or a Klaviyo partner manager, and I hear of a client, a user having issues, instead of me sending them to a .com homepage that's vague and uh, you know they won't know where to go, or starting an email thread, which usually you don't feel comfortable with that. I know that my partner has this landing page up. I can say, you know what, for $1,600, you can have those flows built by an expert. These guys are great. Send you the link. Chances are you'll take my recommendation and buy that. And, um, and obviously you as the agency partner get a, the new client, you get the traffic and you get um, the closer relationship with your tech partner. But what it does for you outside of partnerships, um, from my experience and what I hear is, uh, number one, you are able to create landing pages that convert for specific actionable buying keywords like HubSpot implementation. Um, number two, it's a top of the funnel, easy sort of starting point that snowballs into custom services. 
where if you just sell custom services only, all of your sales are going to be long sales cycles and um, you're going to miss out on a lot of traffic and conversions that some of these other agencies are getting. So we're seeing top agencies. Again, these are really elite HubSpot partners, elite Salesforce and Clavio partners, premium Clavio partners, um, Premier um, doing. So number three, starting with the collaboration. So again, back to that workflow of you meet them, you figure out what you kind of want to do. You're not sure yet. You still need to meet each other and, and get to know each other, really. Sorry. And um, you want to do something in that time period that you as an agency already know how to do. You know how to create content. You know how to do demand generation. Why not include partners in that? So start with a collaboration. We call it co-marketing. It's really what can we do for each other right now outside of the partnership that is mutually beneficial. Uh, here are the examples. Create a course. We'll talk more specifically about that strategy in a minute. Run a webinar. Case in point, Agora Pulse. Mike, he wants to get Agora Pulse's name out there in front of agencies. What does he do? Of course, create an event, bring in a lot of partners. Some are sponsoring, some are just pulling in content, some are thought leaders, and, um, and create this awesome event. That's a win win for everybody. We all benefit from this. You get education, we get eyeballs. Mike and Agora Pulse get eyeballs, and everybody wins. Um, expert interviews for your blog or a podcast co-host an event again case in point summit um sorry submit guest posts um partners will publish your guest posts tech partners or agencies um if they obviously make that tech look good and you can get a lot of traffic and conversions from that um this link is actually broken i'm going to fix that afterwards and get you a better link but um we've got a really good example for you okay number 4 Create a course together. So co-marketing is sort of an umbrella. This is a specific strategy to get ROI from tech companies and it works really well. I'm sorry, ROI from partnerships and it works really well. So the strategy is this. First, get with the team, write up an outline for a pain point that your customers typically come to you to solve with services. A good example is a full funnel conversion campaign for B2B lead generation. And it involves... Traffic, landing pages, post form, XYZ workflows and Zapier and connections and all this stuff, right? Um, write up the outline, break it into a number of classes. Each one of those classes is a specific topic that relates to the bigger you know, agenda of creating whatever that is, uh, teaching someone how to create whatever that is. And in that class, there is a tool that's needed. If it's the landing page, maybe you have, I don't know, landing or unbounce or whatever it is. And, um, and then you have the next class. The next class is a different aspect of it. Maybe it's connecting the card or it's connecting um, a chat pop-up. Uh, maybe there's Drift included. Maybe there's an email tool included. Maybe Zapier plus that. So add the tech that you're gonna include a mention of in each class, then add a competing tech that you still are comfortable with. And, um, and maybe even add a third competing tech that you may not be comfortable with, but you feel like you can get the hang of it pretty quickly. Then go to each technology in these classes and say, hey, we are about to put a lot of time and effort into creating a course around how to do blank, blank, blank. We have a class on how to connect the cart to chat or influencer to pop up or whatever. And we know that your tool works really well to do that. Uh, in return for taking our time to develop the content and to train our students on how to do it with your tool specifically, what can you do for us to help get this course noticed? And if you've done your presentation correctly, that tech company should say something like, you know what? I would love to link to your course in one of our onboarding emails. That would be killer, user onboarding emails. Um, maybe they're willing to pay for it. Maybe they're willing to give you just some funding to get the course done. Maybe they're willing to, I don't know, pay up front for a number of seats and send their users through those seats because this is gonna be a paid course. Um, but what you should do, and you should really want the traffic and the leads of this course, not necessarily the revenue, um, is go
go to them and say, you know what, if we come up with a deal, um, I'm willing to give your users a free account. So you're the tech company, you've got users that are struggling with your product. The best thing you can do is send them to a course done by a professional agency that says not just how to use my product in the funnel, but how to create a workflow, full funnel with my product. So create that course with the tech companies that have agreed to do something to promote the course, money, sponsorship, sending people in some way, shape or form. Launch the course, send them all the links, get that co-marketing endeavor going. Here's a link to a great course that's I think Shopify and a number of other, I'm sorry, SaaS that are in that course. Okay, now you are co-marketing with your partners. Own your event landing pages. So we did this with this event. We've got our own community. We've got our own ability to create event landing pages. And I created a landing page about this summit in our community. And that links back to the main event page where they do have to convert and register. If you wanna continue getting more from the endeavors, the work that you put in to make sure your partners are getting great content, don't just show up record and let that be it really take control of the bigger picture which is the branding of it you know 10 percent of rsvps may show up to a webinar something like that i don't know what it is today but those 90 percent they rsvp'd on a landing page or at least they saw and went to a url why can't you drive traffic from your newsletter to your event landing page instead of driving it to the third parties, the partners landing page. So start with yours, make click through to theirs. Yes, it increases the funnel a bit, but you at least kept the social posts and the event emails um, going to a, a domain that you own and got the benefit from that. The SEO, clicks, branding, traffic, all that great stuff. Uh, now you are going to market with partners and there are resource needs. There's expenses when you go to market with partners. I had one agency who does enterprise SaaS, given he's a Marketo Salesforce partner. He told me he budgets $10,000 to go to market with a new tech partner. That's time and resources, asset development, um, time in general from his agency. And given it's enterprise, there's a lot more to it. So if you're SMB budget, you know, $3,000, something like that. So, you know, I said to him, you know, how much are you relying on your partners to deliver the assets? And he said, yeah, we try, but sometimes they deliver crap assets and we have to go and create those assets ourselves. And then I'd say, I'd push back on that a bit and say, you know what, don't just take what they give you and go create your own if they're not good enough really put some pressure to create some good assets. Um, one of our partners, Smith.ai, has some great assets that they give their partners. These are white label sales decks. These are ad creatives that you can add your own logo to. Again, white label. Um, lean on your partner, create assets. That's where a lot of the costs and time come in when you're going to market with partners. Let them send you good quality assets that you can use. And if they're not, push back and say, we need, we need something a little more high quality and be specific, like change this, do this, work with them, right? Okay, now we're getting into the revenue side of partnerships, getting the actual referrals done. So map accounts with your partners for a few reasons. Um, if you're not sure what account mapping is, we have a co-selling masterclass. Account mapping is a precursor to co-selling. Mapping accounts gets you the data. Co-selling is the action. But mapping accounts can give you data that can provide attribution for your partnership. So the easiest way to understand it is, um, you both connect CRMs to a third party tool. Reveal is one, Crossbeam you may have heard of um, is another. And that tool allows you to um, privately encrypted show overlap the numbers. How many people are in my sales pipeline, my CRM that are also in yours? And how many people do you have at which stage so that we can get an idea of first and foremost, how potentially valuable our partnership can be. If you don't have any overlapping accounts, that means your sales teams are not going after the same target customer profiles. That's good indication that you will not 
have a lot to say on the referral side of things. So map the accounts before you go into a co-marketing endeavor as well. And even if you don't have any overlap, it's good because if we're going to put a lot of time and effort into an event together, what I would say is, well, you know, before we even do that, let's map accounts. Let's see, you know, what our, what our overlap looks like. And then what that will do is once we go into the event, we can look back at our overlap and say, you know, it was five, five companies that we were both selling to before we started this event. And then we promoted the event. We went live with the event, had a lot of attendees. And now the overlaps at 10 or 20 or whatever it went up is the point that tells me that that event impacted my sales pipeline in a positive way. If it remained flat, probably missed the uh, customer uh, profile on that event, that target customer profile. Next thing to do is to go into an active co-selling motion, which is where I say those five accounts in there, I really want to get to know them. Are you able to show me the company names? And if you're my trusted partner, you say, yes, you show me company names. And then I create a, an offer for each one of those company names. And I say, this URL, this company, I'm willing to give them this service for free, a free audit, a free whatever. That company, I'm willing to give them a discount on this retainer or package up something. Give your partner something to offer them. So hopefully they'll send them that offer and say, hey, these guys over here, they're really good. They want to offer you this or offer our clients. They don't have to say specifically you, but you know, offer our clients this as a way of our partnership. Um, as a part of our partnership. So mapping accounts, very actionable, very revenue focused, which your CRO or your CEO will appreciate. Tracking the right KPIs. Now with partnerships, your main KPI is going to be partner sourced revenue. You have partners in your CRM. How many, how many sales and referrals, uh, converted referrals are coming from those partners, that group of that segment, that group of people. Um, but that could take months. Six months is the average time for partnerships to really become an ROI positive endeavor, just like content marketing. Think of it like that. So what can you track before revenue? Um, traffic, backlinks. So I did an event with you, my partner, before we even started referring business. And uh, I got a lot of traffic from that. Okay, great. Now we have engagement on partner level events. How many people actually showed up for the event? Oops, sorry. That's another KPI. So I'd have a tracking dashboard for, okay, well, um, here's the current number, how much traffic I've gotten from their domain. Uh, here's the total for how many total people have come to an event that we've put together. Pipeline velocity, they may not have closed yet, but our pipeline velocity is speeding up meaning they're going quicker from prospect to, I don't know, demo, whatever it is. Uh, and then of course they close faster. That's the bigger thing. That becomes a revenue KPI. But pipeline velocity should increase as you have more partners. It's more influence on your pipeline. And of course, referred deals are usually the fastest through the pipeline. Okay, now we're almost done. Number nine, set alerts. Sales Navigator is one option. It's just the easy one, um, but there are other ways to do this. And what the bigger picture, the thing that you want to think about with partnerships is it's a two-way street. They may have came to you in a cold email and asked you to partner. They may want you more than you need them. But if you're going to engage with a partner, you have to know that in order for it to be fruitful for both of you, you've got to remind them that you exist. They're people, they've got a job to do. They've got other people in the uh, pipeline. They've got other people in their schedule. Uh, if they're an agency partner, they've got customer needs. They've got fires they got to put out. So just know that you'll get forgotten. It's just part of life. So some of our best agency partners will use products like Sales Navigator and set alerts when new sales or CS are the two big ones, team members, get added to the company, get hired, and they'll reach out to that new hire, say congrats, 
and then say, you don't know me, but I'm hoping to get to know you. I am blank and I do blank. And we have been partners for two years and we have a couple of successful case studies together. And I'd love to meet you at some point. Let's grab a virtual coffee, send them your 15 minute calendar. Then that person at that partner company knows you and knows who you target, what you do, what you sell. And then from there, you just keep up the communication. Hopefully they followed you on LinkedIn. Hopefully you post frequently on LinkedIn and they remember you. And on their next call with a customer who has a major pain point, they remember, oh man, that agency that reached out to me on LinkedIn, they sent me this example case study that they had with us. And you guys seem to be having the same problem. I'm going to introduce you. Perfect. That would not have happened if you weren't proactive. So being proactive, knowing it's a two-way street, setting up alerts, automations uh, to make your life easier so you can get referrals from the new people that join those companies and the old people that just don't even remember you exist. Two-way street. All right. So number 10, last strategy for today. There are more. Um, you can reach out to me for more, of course. But let's go into this final one. Um, this one was so good. We actually productized it in Partner Hub. Uh, you have a partner memorandum um, tab on your profile that you can um, edit or on your partner profile that you can update and change. Um, but what it is, is essentially when you go into a partnership, if you are not treating it like a business endeavor, uh, like you you have a plan and a, a, a strategy in place and a goal, like anything else in life, it's probably going to fizzle out and not generate much for you. So what we call this as a partnership memorandum, it's your expectations, your timelines, your commitments, everything that you should know about what you have discussed and agreed to with that partner. It's a three-page document you can have right here, or if you're a Partner Hub user, you just pull up that partner and it's a tab on their profile and change it as you need it. But um, it sets the expectations. It's something you can refer back to. And it basically tells your partner, this is what we agreed to do together. I met my end of the deal. Did you meet yours? Yes or no. Every quarter you meet back and refer to it. Check off some of the things you guys accomplished. Add some new goals for the next quarter and uh, take it away and, and continue growing. Just like anything you do, set some goals, document it, make it a an operation. That was my presentation. I hope all of you enjoyed it. I'm trying this QR code thing that will link to the registration page for Partner Hub. We have a free application, free, 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 free for you to use to find and manage partnerships. Take that, or you can just head to app.partnerhub.app slash register. Thank you for listening. Again, my name is Alex Glenn, and I hope to see you all online.